welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is the podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 75 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and today we've got a Facebook Live recording we previously did a few weeks ago with drivers Flynn and Melanie from New Zealand and Cody Mackay from Mackay Motorsports based up in Newcastle. In this episode, we talk about how they utilise Twitch and TikTok for their social media platforms as athletes and the benefits to those programs. And we talked to Cody in more details around about how he's been actually able to secure a sponsorship during this pandemic and um, pretty much all the publicity he's been able to get. It's been fantastic for where I've looked, he's been. So I hope you really enjoyed this show, guys. If you've been considering about working with us at Motivate, uh, here's a little bit of a testimonial of what it's like. Enjoy the show. Hi, guys. Alex Yarn here, go Car Racer from Queensland. I've been with Motivate for about a year now, and I've definitely benefited from her and her crew. Nutrition, social media, sponsorship, and exercise is what she helps me with. She also does mental strength as well. I'm looking forward to my journey ahead with Motivate Training. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Motorsport. I was going to say the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, but that's wrong. <laughs> A great start, everyone. Welcome to the Motorsports Sponsorship Facebook Group um, Monthly Facebook Live. I am Belinda Risley, founder of Motivate Management. And tonight, guys, we've got Flynn all the way from NZ. Hey, Flynn's going to be talking to us a bit about TikTok and Twitch. Really just yep. educating me about it all, which is fantastic. And Cody, Cody's been a previous guest on the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, as you Obviously, you've listened to it, and um, as you would know, Cody's very down with sponsorship, and we're going to talk about PR and what he's been up to in this time. Obviously, mm. he's been getting lots of great um, publicity. Sorry, I'm just, there you go. How's that? that there you go. Perfect. Sweet. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, bits and pieces there. It's all very exciting. Um, before we get it started, guys, I just want to go through some housekeeping um, about what's happening into the group. Um, whilst everybody's logging on, um, we've got a new system. So if you're there, say hello. Hey, Marcus. Welcome. Have you guys seen the new system, Cody and Flynn? Hey, how good does that look? I know. Yeah, it's pretty cool, hey. So all the questions will come up, except when I go to talk by myself, I forget to put the questions up and all the links. So if you guys don't have any references, um, I think you guys have got access to the comments that you can just put them directly up. Can you see oh, comments? Sweet. Perfect. Yeah, cool. All right, guys. Well, last month um, we were in the Junior Driver uh, Development Summit and it was a great success. Um, from that, a lot of um, content came through. And Flynn was one of those participants. Did you enjoy it, Flynn? Yeah, it was great. I learned so much in that one day with just all the coaches and I honestly think it's really going to help me. And I'm actually currently talking to a lot of those guys as we're looking to work further more with my real-life racing. Yeah, and so one of the biggest outcomes that I've got is that people are still struggling uh, with social media and the content, posts, how to get engagements, how to get followers and stuff, so like, so forth. And so therefore on um, May 16th, um, Saturday week um, at 9 a.m., I'm going to do a, a workshop. I was going to have all of the platforms, um, but the more that I've researched into the whole nitty-gritty of utilising every platform, I've, I have cut it back to Facebook, um, LinkedIn and the Instagram. But, of course, um, tonight we're going to talk about TikTok and uh, Twitch, and I've been doing my research into it as well. Um, fortunately, I – well, unfortunately, I don't have a document ready for you guys. I was hoping to have it ready, but between homeschooling, cooking, cleaning, um, I'm just a bit – I've run out of time at the moment doing podcast interviews. <laughs> Everybody's home. Everyone, everyone's free to do podcast interviews. Um, but I'm also trying to homeschool the kids. And then homeschooling, I've got, like, more washing. I've got more cooking. I've got more cleaning. It's doing my head in. <sighs> breath Linda. Um, so anyway, guys, um, so May 16th, um, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We're going to do a live workshop for about two hours. So we're going to go right into the nitty-gritty of Facebook, how to get the best out of it, Instagram, Instagram stories, Instagram um, live TV, um, and so much how to use it, how to watch a post, how to post it, um, and fitting into the storytelling, which I think you liked, um, didn't you, Flynn? 
about identifying, identifying brand stuff. Um, so if you like the link, just pop in um, social media workshop and I'll send you guys some more information. And again, after tonight, um, once I've compiled all the information on TikTok for athletes and Twitch for athletes, um, you can pop those into the comments and I will send you through Messenger or live here actually uh, those documentations. Cool. It is all happening. What else? Um, I don't know. What is everyone posting? Have, has everyone been active on social media? Cody, what have you been up to with social media? Yeah, well, social media is like our lifeblood at the moment to keeping our whole motorsport team and myself active. Um, we've That's pretty much our only outlet because we've had our outlet of um, – of obviously the racing itself, the big events taken away from us. So we've really diverted back to um, just posting whatever we can, just whatever's on the mind, just photos from previous events, um, you know, trying to get fans engaged, trying to build followers, trying to invest in the platforms as well, to try and just use this time while we're down, while everyone is looking at their phones because that's one thing we've got to think about it, like the usage of, you know, mobile phones and computers and all that have skyrocketed because people are literally sitting at home or they can't go out of an evening. So what's the first thing they do? They grab their phone. So we've been trying working as hard as possible just to capture that. And, yeah, our numbers are skyrocketed because of it. Fantastic. And, Flynn, what have you been doing? Um, yeah, I've basically been the same as well. I'm just trying to grow myself as a brand using social media. I've been competing in a lot of... um esport events as yeah. most of the real life racing has all been transferred into the sim racing events so i've been competing in a lot of overseas events so i've been getting up at what was it last two races i got up at 4 a.m in the morning to compete in a formula three race which was interesting but it's really good and i've noticed that i've been getting a lot more followers recently just because i've been posting more on social media and that goes the same for like twitch and tiktok i've been able to post more on those platforms and i've been growing myself which is really good Cool. Well, that's a great lead way into what is Twitch. Let's start off with Twitch. Um, for those who joined us on, I watched the replay from Monday night. I spoke to Lachlan Mansell, um, and he's normally a, a um, commentator for the AMRS series, and he looks after a few drivers doing their media. And um, during CV19, he's now jumped onto the board of eSport or iRacing and started a new website. He's starting commentating, starting blogs, and interviewing those drivers. So it is, I think it is here to stay. I think everyone would agree with that. Um, but tell us a bit about Twitch. Yeah, so Twitch is a, it's a real, it's a platform on online that's been growing rapidly over the past five years. And it's mainly a website which is people live stream, mostly gaming, make gaming live streams. But a lot of people have been recently doing a lot of, IRL live streams as well, but it's mainly yeah a live streaming platform for people. Anyone can just pop on their computer or their phone, click the live button, and then they can just go live for people. And a lot of people do it as a job, which is really yeah. cool. And we've been noticing a lot of motorsport people getting into it as well. Like me, I've been trying to, and a lot of it's especially now what's happening in the situation around the world. It's been growing massively recently. Yeah, and so as I said, I've been doing my research this week and I've been talking to Power Strike or Power Pipe or something. But anyway, they look after the Twitch gamers um, and speaking to a lot of them around about sponsorship and how to gain. And from the research and the documentation I've been um, compiling together, it's how to get sponsorship um, for your e-racing, um, i-racing um, series. And, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? From what yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely the same because, yeah, as I was saying before, like everyone's attention now is on to the esports. Like, fine enough now, <laughs> Dad's over in the other room watching the V8s go around and basically everyone, all those sponsors are trying to work on these. They're trying to rely basically on these e-series to get their brand out there. And it's really cool because then, in a way, it interacts with both sides of like the business of the driver and the sponsor can get something good out of it, which is a really cool thing about this whole live streaming service. Yes, uh, that is the unfortunate thing of having this Facebook Live on a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. It used to be a prime time um, and we used to have a lot more Aussies here. But uh, because of the Supercast series, it's not helping me. But that's okay. Um, people can watch the replay. They just can't get their questions yeah. answered. 
Um, exactly. so anyway, I, as I said, I'm just like scrolling through my notes that I've been taking around about how to do Twitch. And there's just so many things um, when it comes to gaining sponsorship within. Um, tell us a little bit about how you've utilised your sponsors um, within the app. Um, I've been able to um, represent them a lot more, I've noticed, just because there's a lot of things you can do on Twitch, whereas you can't really do when you're trying to, like, sh show your sponsors in real life. Like, there's times where I've been able to do, like, video clips or I've been able to make, like, a cool little slideshow or something just about the sponsors or, like, I'm also be able to, just because of how the amount of people that watch the stream, they're directly, like, just watching me instead of like at a racetrack and there's so much going on, I can actually tell them directly about how, how my sponsors work and how it all goes. And fair enough, because two of my main sponsors are um, sim racing brands. And luckily for them, I, I use their products while I'm driving. And it's a good way for me to show if I am doing well on the esports series, then they think, oh, maybe I might get that gear myself because if that's using it for him, then et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I think especially Twitch is a very good way, especially for – showing these sponsors out to people and as you can see with all these e-series like classes and stuff it's been going really well yeah there's so many e-series have you been following anything cody yeah um well i was actually just spewing because i was just about to log on to the v8 supercar <laughs> e-series no i'm just kidding I, I can i can watch that replay anytime it starts at 7 30 we'll be right we'll be off nah. by 7 <laughs> no nah, it's all good um no i've been following as much as possible and um like, yes, well, I've done a little bit of sim racing before. This is my – if we look at the camera, there's my setup there. It's nothing too oh. special. That's a, that's a Logitech, you know, wheel with a race seat that I stole out of another one of our race cars with a mount that I've welded up and bolted on myself and stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, but obviously during these times, you know, I've got right into that for obvious reasons. Um and then it's probably going to collect dust as soon as I get back in a real race car. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I've been following as much as possible because I need my sanity to be there. And um, I've noticed a lot of other people getting right behind it as well. Mm. Yeah. And so it's owned by Amazon. So I, I think it's uh, obviously for Jeff Bezos to invest in Twitch. He can see the benefit in it long term and, and not that it's going to go away anytime soon. And um, no one could have predicted CV19 happening, but I, I feel like he's like now rubbing his hands going, yes, everybody's online. Yeah. All these yeah. that come on board. But um, again, from the research that I found during, during this week, that uh, there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities available. Um, uh, predominantly from food companies, so like from McDonald's and those home delivery type places. Um, Menu Log um, was one of them. Obviously, in America, it's, it's a lot bigger than what it is currently here at the moment. Well, from the stats that I was reading, where the, the data's actually been researched <laughs> over the last six weeks. But um, in America, um, yeah, it was around about food products. Um, it was around about jumpers um, that had a lot of um, sponsorship hats. Um and just little sneaky things behind, so like the little product placement, um, sponsor products um, that was high on the sponsorship for Twitch. See, so I'm I trying to get a sponsorship by Foster's Lager. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like it. It's just they'd never respond to my messages anymore. <laughs> are they still around, Cody? Do they still uh, make yeah, they are, but you really have to hunt for them. It was kind of more of a joke of why I've got it. So, um, yeah, we'll, when we can find it, we'll have a couple, but we won't have too many because I think we all start feeling sick after that. So I'm trying to find Crown Lagers. Uh, <laughs> right at the moment? Mm, at all. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, so, Flynn, you're as um, based in NZ, as I said. Um what, do you have any idea when you guys are allowed to go back racing now that you've come off lockdown? Yeah, so yeah, fun enough. Um, me and Dad were actually talking a lot about it today, and I was I've been talking to a lot of guys back here in New Zealand, and it's nearly the same as a lot of areas. But luckily, over the past few days in New Zealand, we've been having I think we've had for the past few days no new cases, so the government's been a bit more chilled out about, it, and it looks like we might be going into our level two soon which means that we'll be able to go back hopefully racing and stuff but and we did had to change sadly because of the whole situation we had to change our plans because i was meant to be doing a lot of international stuff but that got changed but well, it's all right we found our way around it and we luckily have got an opportunity and 
there's some good stuff coming up as well that I'm really happy to get into. And yeah, hopefully that can keep me racing here in New Zealand until we can hopefully get back out there. But yeah, it's been, it's all right, but yeah, it's definitely a big change for everyone, but it's a new challenge that we definitely want to accept. So yeah. And with like the Twitch, obviously you've, as mentioned before, also that you were racing um, quite a few series and they are international. Um, how's the sponsorship um, worked there? Have you got sponsorship, say if you're working, if you're competing, sorry, in the European Championship, are they from there or are you just utilising the ones that you currently have across all of the different series that you're competing in? Yeah, so I've been able to um, utilise yeah, the sponsors I currently have and the cool thing about it is because since I've been racing against like these a lot of these European championships, I've been able to um, what was it? I've been able to like, use their brand to represent them in these competitions. And then it gets some of these races get quite a bit of viewing. I think when I did the um, it was actually a few weeks ago when I could be in the Formula Four. It was a Formula Four series with all these Formula Four drivers around the world, and that one got a lot of viewing. And one of my um, sponsors came back to me, and they were all like that was really cool. You know, they appreciated me representing their brand and stuff. And I was able to get a guy who um, made the um, design of my livery because it was not like an F4 car. So he made this brand new livery for me and had the sponsorship's name on it. And it looked really good. And they were really happy with how everything was put out for them. So it was a really cool thing about this whole E-series is that it helps the brand still be not to say relevant, but it keeps them going while in this time when they're not able to get that much advertisement out there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I listened to switch. Is, do you say listen? You watched? What do you do? <laughs> I guess like viewing. <laughs> no, like, I viewed Twitch last night for the first time for my research, and it was pretty cool. Um, I don't know whether because I'm old, I don't think I could do it for a long period of time. I think there's been so many times you can watch someone go around a racetrack, but I don't know. Have you ever done it already? No, like, well, I've studied it a little bit um, just seeing little, like, gaming circles and just being in a little bit of knowing that. Um, yeah, it, it's funny how it's kind of catered to it. It, it really is catered to that, uh, you know, that 13 to 25-year-old audience that really yeah. wants something you know different like you know being a little bit older i've grown up with you know sport there was no simulators there's no nothing like that you could only have yeah. that but now we've got you know you could have a professional super mario player like you like yeah. call of duty and even um uh, what's the going on uh fortnight Fortnite people are making millions and millions of dollars oh, yeah. just yeah. just for just for what they're doing because well they've got the target audience that you know the kids um, and younger people and they want to invest in it they want to spend their mum and dad's money into it so um, that was really where we focused and seen it when we we're thinking about like when the the um, COVID Ooh. situation hit we've gone okay we've got to do our sim racing we've got to get that up and going and all that type of stuff it's like. Do we set up a Twitch? Do we do live streams? Do we do this and that? And I was like, well, our fan base and following for someone of my age might not suit the demographic we're looking for. And there's already people there that have had a five, ten-year head start. Um, we're kind of coming in like a flash in the pan, just trying to give a race on it. So we've seen, oh, look, for what we have to invest in it, we're actually going to start forgetting about the team. And I've got a car that I want to rebuild for the fifth time over. Um <laughs> which I really thought was more of a focus and just engaging people um, the old-fashioned way through our Instagram um, and all their social media just to keep everything up and going. So, um, yeah, but have studied it, have looked at it, um, haven't jumped on it as much because we've got a few other things going on. But there is massive potential there if you can get the right products that want to be promoted that way. Yeah, fantastic. Well, as I said, guys, I'll work on that documentation, one to two page things about um, Twitch and how to gain sponsorship um, in the next couple of weeks and then on oh, next week, sorry, and then I'll post it up here in the group. But let's talk a little bit about TikTok. So this is what I know, Flynn. <laughs> yeah, I've got my sons teaching me how to do TikTok, not how to do it, but how to watch it. Again, too old. Facebook and Instagram is my cup of tea. That's why I've got you young ones on, or you young ones with, not you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's tailored for the Gen Z. It's mostly females under 20. Um, they're 15 seconds videos. Um, there's 800 million act 
monthly active users. Yeah, it's massive. It's huge. Um, yeah, so the primary audience is from 14 to 24 year old, which is ideal for sports brand looking to build their fan base to a younger generation. And because there's something on there called the Discover tab, which is similar to the Explore page on Instagram. And this is the page mm. where the active trends and most popular videos can be found. And it gives brands um, an avenue to advertise a widescreen banner at the top of this page. Um, yeah. And the thing called a hashtag challenge. You know, but yeah. there's yep. Yeah. Tell me yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, TikTok, yeah, as you say, it's. It's a rapidly growing app that basically everyone that I know has been using. And I myself have been using a bit of it myself for racing, but it's definitely something that it's, that it's definitely gets the attention of young, the young audience, especially my age, just because it's these quick videos, which can give you a laugh or something or gives you an emotion. You'd be like, Oh, this is cool. And then all of a sudden you watch another video and then it's like, Oh, it's another cool thing, which is, it's a really unique sort of system of how they did it. But, when I noticed, because I the way I got into it was because I noticed um a lot of overseas drivers were using it to the advantage and like they were doing all these like funny skits with them like some of them had like this little like like silly electric car small little toy like toy car that they drove around they had their full suit and helmet on and I was like oh that's pretty funny and then then they have another video of them like have their best clips of them racing and stuff and then I noticed a lot of them would be getting like thousands and thousands of views and hundreds of likes and I was like. Well, I got to give it a go myself. And over the past few months, even before the whole COVID situation, I've been using it just to post stuff like post old, like on boards, um, post like my best racing moments and post some funny stuff just to get some. And I've been slowly getting there. It's definitely, it's definitely an interesting system of how it works to grow yourself, but it's definitely, it's definitely doable from, especially how big it is now. Like anyone could hop on it and just give it a go. Yeah, well, I've been looking at it from a business perspective, which is obviously what we hope for all the motorsport drivers to consider themselves to be a business. And so, again, when I um, pop out this documentation, it's going to be around about how to showcase yourself as a business slash athlete, um, more so than all the funny clips. Um, but I do think, like, I think that that's something that you would be right into. Do you do TikTok, Cody? Yeah, um, I did a bit of an experiment with TikTok. Now, I'm the I'm the type of user that's gone back to um, all I do is it goes 10 o'clock, I'll go to bed, I'll sit on that thing for about 45 minutes an hour and just look at all the mindless dribble and then, um, yeah. you know, you fall asleep, kind of like a YouTube with your phone and stuff like that. Um, beforehand, I've seen everyone started talking about it and, you know, it started to become this big thing. You've had to have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got on there and I started to play with it and I'm going, okay, I think I'm, I've seen what it's like. I could start making some videos and I make a few videos and all those things about what we wear and what we do and funny stuff and bits of us racing and it tanked. It absolutely tanked. Really? But then I, um, this was a time when the bushfires hit. I took a quick snippet of um, we went and donated some goods when everyone was donating in the thick of it. Um, and took a photo of like or a quick little video of everyone there, just um, you know, of what's going on. And the video got like fifty thousand views of what yeah. I put up. Wow. And I was like, hold on a second here. I've put up one thing and no one cares about them, but I put up another thing about the current times and what's going on. And yeah. it absolutely skyrocketed, it got taken off, it just boom, up it went. Post another video after that, the next one tanked. Um, so it comes few to, sorry, it comes down to the type of content. I, I think the type mm -hmm. of content is very, very um important. It's exactly what Flynn was saying. You know, he's kind of got the comedic aspect, and then he mixes his racing in with it. So more of like our Instagram and our Facebook and or LinkedIn and any other social media, it's our racing, and then everything else comes second to it. But with TikTok and a few like your Instagram videos and all or TV and all that type of stuff. They want to see that quick hit of something that's relevant, funny, um, or someone looking really attractive, and then everything else will follow from there. So, um, yeah, trying to mix it in. We've seen it. We've gone, okay, we have to invest a lot of our time and effort just into this one platform and then hope that we get some type of sponsorship from it which we're saying, oh, we're very active on our Instagram and Facebook, which is our 
you know, more go to, more the user base we follow, more the people that come into it. So like we've already invested, we keep into that. We don't need a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh yeah, that's right. that's social that's media. Right. But exactly why Flynn's in a better position than me, he's at the age and the time where he can capture it. He's probably got a bit more time on his hands than what I do on busy running a race team, running a business and trying to get on the track as much as possible um, and everything else in between. So that becomes that new age people that people are going to take advantage of. This happened with Instagram. Um, you know, Instagram was a social media outlet that no one wanted to touch and then all of a sudden it's one of the most popular in the world and Facebook bought it out. It was that popular. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, it's, it takes time and effort but it can be worth it. But whether people are getting million-dollar contracts from it, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> no, that's what I'm investigating. But, um, yeah, it, currently it's the third um, highest platform still after um, Facebook and Instagram. So it's still not yep. there yet. Um, yep. I think I'm going to lock down and just maybe having that um, bit of release, like you're saying, that you can go to bed at 10, watch 45 minutes and just kind of switch off and download. And whether it's actually seen to be a business platform and at the end of the day, that's what I'm looking for you guys, is whether it's going to give a platform for A, to get more followers, to get more sponsors and to get more fan engagement. Mm. Um, so, Glenn, what's your TikTok account number so everyone can... Handle, yeah, so, yeah, so the, yeah, I guess the yeah, that's the thing, it's a bit different to my Instagram, but it's um Flynn just in low caps Flynn dot zero, and it's just the letter zero, so yeah, it's just a username I just thought because it's like, I mean, I tried putting in my own name on TikTok, like my same as on Instagram, I'm like, oh, it's already taken. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it shows the amount of users that are already on that on the on the, on the application, so yeah, yeah, it's all right. Um, if you've got access to the comments, can you put that straight in? I think whoever talks must have the access to the comments because I don't seem to have access to pop in. Yeah, put so you can put that in so everyone can see. And same, just like put TikTok and your um, social media account and Twitch <laughs> and what your handle is. It's still called a handle. Oh, my God. Um, and pop that in. And so, yeah, everyone can kind of start following you and seeing what you're doing there and yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. To yeah, great. TikTok and Twitch. Yeah, um, no, it's been great. Cool. So we're just going to finish off tonight talking. You can stay on if you like. Or you can go watch the E series. I know it's late for you. <laughs> yeah, um, I've missed the start, anyways. It doesn't matter. It's all, oh, all the action happens at the start. <laughs> and then it's just 15 laps of them trying to figure out where they are and which direction they're going on the track. So it's yeah. fine. Where the, right. the crashes are gone. <laughs> Doesn't it start at seven thirty? That's how. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I even forgot it was on until you reminded me. So oh, okay. there's, there's yeah. going to be so many reviews and everything about it. You can always catch mm. it later. I think that's where I picture it tonight because now we have a lot more than what's on here. But anyway, um, well, we'll let's keep you long, Cody. I just wanted to know. Oh, yeah. um, I feel like everywhere I look, you are at the moment, which is fantastic. And um, I feel that there's a lot of drivers going, oh, what can I do? I don't know what I can do. But you seem to have found a way to keep your lovely mug shot in front of everybody. <laughs> um, so tell us, what have you been up to and how have you been able to go about that? Yeah, so um, with this, like when all this hit, you know, I was kind of, what, very, very worrying about um, oh, what are we going to do for sponsors. We're, we're in the middle of actually attracting some new big sponsors as well. So we're pretty upset that a lot of these relations and breakdowns collapse pretty much just because of this stupid virus or whatever you want to call it that shut down <laughs> all the world. Um, so we've been out and we really said, okay, do we just kind of keep quiet, let everyone get over it and then kind of get back into it? Or do we just keep pumping it and pumping it and pumping it as much as possible because we're going to have a bit more time on our hands to take advantage of this, restructure, relearn, and redo what we've got to do there. Um, so, yeah, like every chance that we can get on the local news, we do any chance that we can, um, you know, get in papers or do podcasts or just post online and connect and just build relationships with people. We're just being taking advantage of it 100% um, because, yeah, it might mean that we build a relationship with, with someone now while everything's quiet and then when the season kicks off, they say, hey, you did so good 
in the quiet time. We want to see you in the good times. Um, so, yeah, that's where everything we've been doing, we've just ramped it up 100% from what we've um, originally been doing. Yeah, and how have you gone about those opportunities? Because, uh, again, I feel like a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, no one's doing anything, everyone's kind of shut down. But that hasn't been the case, obviously, as you just No, said. exactly. Like people still, like people in this sense are bored. Uh, everyone's bored. They're, you know, sick of usually most people are out socialising, connecting and everything like that. They want to be talking about stuff. And people will never stop talking about stuff. Um, whether it be their favourite sport, their actors or whatever else goes into it. So, um, yeah, we've just been trying to talk about talk about our racing and everything because, one, it distracts people and, um, two, it gives people hope and all that type of stuff as well. So doing that is being beneficial for everyone in the long run. Like if you're quiet now, you know, how quiet are you going to be when it comes race season as well? If V8 supercars and every other sport in the world can capitalise, like turn into a full e-racing category, they're doing that to keep their sponsorship live and their like the fan base live. Because if they went six months with no racing, there's a guarantee that they would have a massive drop in viewers yes. um, when it comes on to go time. So doing that and keeping everyone active while everyone's on their phones and everyone's watching TV is being the, the biggest part of what we're trying to capture. Everyone's capturing these we need to use them so mm. and so you've been able to score like tell us talk yourself up Cody. Tell us, <laughs> tell us. I mean, you've seen you on tv you've been doing like local yeah well well we've doing- now built relationships with um the nbn television and nbn news which is our um which they cover most of east coast's television i think between the upper of Sydney and lower of Brisbane. So we've captured that melting pot of where we are in Newcastle to build connections and relationships. So when we do have a big event or when we do have a race event coming up, we can make sure that we're on the camera instead of someone else or a competitor or another story. Um, I'm just going to interrupt there, sorry, Cody. And how have, about, how have you gone about um, achieving that? Um, uh, just like... Being online, Facebooking, Instagramming, LinkedIn-ing, um, LinkedIn-ing. I don't yep. know if that's a word. Um, talking. But reach, yeah, talking. Um, reaching out talking. to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of giving people something and getting something in return. Mm-hmm. Um, using all of our social media outlets, just calling and ringing and all the cold calls and stuff like that in between to not ask for sponsorship because, let's face it, we technically have got no product to sell when it comes to sponsorship. Um, you can't yeah. go racing. You can't promote them at big events. Well, then what point are you? So um, that's where we've come in and just used all our networks and said, hey, like, can we do a story about us and the team in the meantime of what we're doing when we're in this downtime? Or, you know, this is something cool that we've found or this is something interesting that we're into. And, yeah, you're just building and talking and getting that relationships all up. It's networking 101 pretty yeah. much. Yeah, well, I still feel like a lot of the drivers, as I said, have been apprehensive about still getting themselves out there. But as yep. you've proven to be able to do that in the last six or seven weeks. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, our figures for Facebook and stuff like that, I think oh, I think we nearly clipped. I know the other day I put something up and over the last couple of weeks I was like over 60 or 70,000 people that have visited reacted liked with just one of our facebook pages and that's because we've been pushing it like absolutely pushing it where i've noticed that other teams have pretty much gone into hibernation mode un- overnight because they're like oh well we haven't got any content now that's coming up so we've got nothing to look forward to well we've got buckets of tons and years of content that you know photos and all that stuff we're stored up why aren't we showing people why aren't we doing flashbacks why aren't we doing this why aren't we doing that mm-hmm. um sorry Cody, just just while you're talking, do you want to um, pop, actually pop in your social media accounts there? So Kevin can yeah, what you're actually definitely. Doing. Um, hold on. Let me see how I can work this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a bit complicated, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Um, but as Cody's saying, guys, um, everybody has a pile of information and social media content that they can be utilising uh, and basically utilise it to tell your story. So if you haven't told your story, um, going right back to how you started, oh, now he's gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's completely gone. Um, how he, you got started uh, from racing, you know, this can be st from a photo or like with you and your dad or you and your mum at the racetrack and, and story tell um, from all the information that you have, all those photos, these images. And it's, I think sometimes people get um, really concerned, oh, oh, I've posted this before, I can't repost it again. But you've got to remember, like, this is stats of people coming onto these new platforms that it's okay mm -hmm. to repost stuff even from 12 months ago um, that you can uh, repurpose it again. And so even if it's like old race um, clips, I've seen some guys now going back to the cadet racing. I mean, Mm, I'm a bit like, oh, there's only so many races you can watch. But, you know, if it's about your first time at the track and it's the video about you coming to the race or getting yeah. to the race track and getting out of the car and sitting it and, you know, mum's interviewing you after you get out of the car, like, oh, um, um, no, wrong wrong thing, Cody. Go to no, comment. Yeah, I, it won't let me comment, unfortunately. Oh, so <laughs> I'll just put it in there. You can <laughs> copy and paste it into the group. I'll put it up. Um, yeah. You know, those kind of videos from, you know, pull them back out with it 20 years or two years or two months ago and tell mm. your story from, from start to finish. Um, mm. Yeah. I'm going to write that code so you can just tell us a story. I'll tell you a story. Well, once when I fell down a mountain, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably um one thing. Flynn, I'm actually interested myself. Um yeah, coming into you're saying you've seen that all your like a lot of European drivers you're trying to follow at the moment they're using these new social media outlets. Have you found there's been an explosion of like your following because you're pace, posting race content, or do you have to find that kind of like we we're saying before that you've got to put something else to try and lead up and over mm -hmm. to get your face content um, interested? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely yeah, like. It's definitely um, like it's like a balance of both of them in a way. You put in like a lot of uh, mainly yeah, like sixty percent the motorsport stuff, mm. but then like yeah, and then like the forty percent of it can be like some funny skits or yeah. something yeah, just something that's a bit different in the system. Because I've noticed, and like you were saying before, like something that's trending at the time can actually help boost a lot because everyone's going to be talking about it. So mainly not like events, but if there's like, like you were saying before about like that hashtag challenge, like if there's like a specific challenge or like someone's doing like a specific dance or something, uh, I've noticed, I think I noticed one of the few European carters, they did like these dancing challenges with a full race suit on and then it's like they got thousands and thousands of views for it and it's like, yeah. wow. Do you boys dance? <laughs> nah, nah, not really. <laughs> Only after a few red wines. <laughs> I was talking to another lady in motorsports today during a podcast, and we we're just saying about TikTok, and we we're thinking, yes, guys, motorsport drivers is really that demographic that loves to have a good time, doesn't so much want to talk, and um, yeah, whether they have a drink or not have a drink, and um, they kind of always like to goof around. It's only like fifteen seconds to so have a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, guys, I know you're itching to get back to the Supercar E series. Sorry for putting this on a Wednesday night, but I really I'm do having, appreciate it. I'm a more funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just chewing the fat, really. Like I said, yeah. it's just that. Just trying to educate the guys around what's out there and what's available and really just for trying to find the social media platform that's right for them. Mm. And then also I just really wanted to promote, like, yeah, don't be scared to put yourself out there like Cody has been doing and getting yourself some exposure and trying to build those relationships now because I've been saying for the last six or seven weeks since um, we've been in lockdown, um, people, business owners are at home and you now do have kind of more access to them because they're not having to, to worry and think about the everyday functions of their business. And so mm. if you do have um, or if you are fortunate enough um, to have their phone number, they have more time now to actually speak to you about the opportunities. What's really hard for us, though, is we don't know what that opportunity is going forward. So what do our series look like? Are they going to be cut short for 2020? Are they all going to be rolled out? Um, and what does that process look like? But, you know, you can still start having those conversations anyway with people, especially those contacts that we've had, and saying, look, we are going to go back to racing, especially with you, Flynn, now that the, the um, lockdown has been lifted up, and especially if you're based in mm. the Northern Territory and South Australia, and I'd say WA in the next couple of weeks, that you can say, okay, well, 
you know, we're starting. So like everything else, everything else is going in stages of um, getting uh, reintroduced again. Um, so just these partnerships. So don't be scared. Get out there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. <laughs> well, that's all I've got, really. <laughs> I'm just going to it as. Um, as I said, guys, I'll um, work on some information about Twitch and TikTok and I'll send it over to Flynn to, to get a tick of approval and also I'm working with another consultant who does expertise in these um, about you know exactly how you can leverage off it but according to twitch from what i can see it's exactly the same as um getting normal sponsorship you know you need to nurture that relationship you need to partner with them you need to hear what they're wanting to get out of that relationship um you know do they just want product placement in the back do they want you to wear the cap you can have stickers you know <laughs> i have mm. to see like in a few years that they probably will be sitting in full legit race suits or regardless yeah, you know yeah. whatever <laughs> What that sport that you are that would just be all you know fully sponsored and logoed up um but you know again like what are they wanting to get out of it? are they happy just for their their brand to be going around on, on a wheel oh i have that on here i haven't done that but um now i feel like i want to do it oh hey. let's see hey. Hey, I <laughs> Um, are they happy? We should, we should get some sponsors for the show now. Um, <laughs> but are they happy to just have that uh, rolling down the bottom of, of it? Um, but again, uh, and then what? Putting that financial figure um, against that. So, so what is your wealth to do that? I mean, even though you're sitting there playing, it's still time away from your family and friends and everything else that you, you're meant to be doing. So. Um, that was the biggest thing that I was reading about the Twitch is about how to price it correctly, the sponsorship. But as you know, Flynn, there's a lot more money to be won by the sounds mm. of it and a lot more opportunity yeah. when it comes to motorsports. As we know, overseas, there's a lot of um, the Formula One test drivers that have won those drives. Um, some of them mm. have never even been in a real race car. They've only um, achieved that win purely by doing some racing. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, definitely. And one of the biggest examples is Igor Fraga, which he did do, used to do a lot of racing back in a few years back, but it cut short because obviously because of just, yes, he wasn't able to obtain sponsors, but he found that way through sim racing and he grew his, his own brand up and he worked with Gran Turismo because he was doing super well and he was able to do stuff. He did Formula Regional last year and then he went into the, the TR, Toyota Racing Series, which I was, fun enough, I was able to watch. Um, I remember he one at Hampton Downs and I was actually in the um the team's pit with his dad watching it and I was like, Oh, this is wicked. But um yeah, it was cool. It's cool seeing, yeah, someone like Igor win that championship and then all of a sudden was it a few weeks after that he got signed to do F three and then a few like a week after that got signed by Red Bull and he was mainly doing sim racing for the past few years. So it's a massive he's a massive idol for people wanting to move from sim racing into the real race cars, which is a really cool thing. I think my question with that, Flynn, and I don't even know if you would know the answer, but I kind of think, well, those guys do sim racing either because of expenses or B, they are an introvert. And we know becoming a successful motorsport driver that you have to be able to, to, to talk and to be mm -hmm. able to do presentations. And and it would be like going from a, an, um, a movie star or, you know, a sitcom series and then all of a sudden you have a big hit and then your life, you're all of a sudden like in the limelight and mm. how do they actually respond to all of that? And because they haven't had the media training since they were 12 or 16 yeah. or early 20s, you know, they've gone from sitting behind and I'm thinking of my generation, the people that generally sit behind the wheels that are those introverts and so I'd like to see um, how they present themselves on the outside, so to speak. Um when they're now got a camera put into their face and now they're expecting to, to perform and when they've mm. kind of been, you know, just they hadn't really had to prove or speak or do anything to anyone um, to get where they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's definitely an interesting question to say the most because a lot of, because um, especially because I used to, funny enough, when um, before I did track racing, I had a bit of a gap before when I finished karts and I did a lot of sim racing and I competed in a lot of um, sim racing competitions in New Zealand. And I remember the people I was up against because I was quite, I was basically the youngest person competing. A lot of the guys I was competing against were just sim racers. And <laughs> fine enough, some of them have never done interviews in their entire life. And a lot more I remember a lot of them were a bit confused on what they did and what they had to say and stuff and how they represented themselves. So they were all, usually they were just very quick 
and how they did it, or they'd be like simple answers. But I, you can definitely notice the difference between someone who's already had experience with that media and racing and someone who hasn't had the experience. Because I remember one of the same competitions when one of these guys had a talk, another driver who actually was a racing driver at the time, he won it and then he had this massive interview and he just completely did it perfectly, just swift and smooth. And yeah, there's definitely, I feel like there's something with that as well. Yeah, so I'd love to probably like watch those people's journeys and all of these races because they're new names as well. It's not like you're going to um, just go to Facebook and look up Lachlan because you hear his name everywhere. These are people that have just all of a sudden um, come into our lives, so to speak, and yeah. now we've got to go, okay, cool, like who are they and what do we know about them? And all we know is that they've won a competition that was online. They've probably pocketed 250000 or a million bucks. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And they've got these um, drivers part of it. And then, as you can hear, um, as we know, a lot of these drivers are getting picked up by these Formula One teams to go on and be test drivers or race in the, the um, support categories. But we mm. don't know anything about them. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh, well. Again, some more research for us to do. Lachlan gave me some names the other night about some Australian um, e races some, for from those guys and, and again i've never heard of them had, had you i don't know if you guys listened to monday night but um if you did had you have heard of those guys james racer i, I don't think that was his name james uh, somebody oh yeah oh is it james baldwin or yeah i don't know it's in my notes here <laughs> somewhere <laughs> i was expecting right. to pull it up but yeah, there's definitely, I've met a lot of um, sim racers through motorsport. I actually found when I went to um, FIA Games last year, there was a, um, a sim racing oh, cool. category for it, and it was really cool. I was like, wow, and they did this massive thing with all the countries there, and I remember one of the guys I met was, as I was saying, James Baldwin, and I, had a, I remember I talked with him when I was there and stuff, and I learned that he did a bit of karting beforehand, and then he couldn't can't afford to do the track racing so he moved to sim and he's done extremely well and i've been talking to him ever since that trip in italy and he's been doing so well he competed in the world's fastest gamer which is this oh, yeah. event one that, um, yeah. yeah yeah so it was this massive event and he won it and he got a seat in um i think it was the blanc pond and this mclaren gt3 and i was like wow like the jump he did was really cool so yeah it was really cool seeing and move up like that just from a sim racing competition yeah and i don't i know you're only new to motivate um flynn but i've previously interviewed um, clayton kingman and he was the promoter and the marketing person of that event oh wow so yeah so listen to that interview on the motorsport coaching podcast and he'll yeah he go through about how they're selected and how and how much money they won and that's when i first um, had my eyes open to the opportunities of eSport. I guess from my perspective, being an exercise physiologist that I just get concerned about, I'm on one hand trying to promote um, fitness and well-being and everyone being active, and then we've got people earning millions of dollars sitting down, um, yeah. you know, not only racing but playing Fortnite and doing all these different games for, as you mentioned before, Flynn, for like 24 hours, <laughs> um, they're doing yeah. um, events as well, and no doubt it's physical, but I don't really think it's the same physical capability of actually racing a real yeah. race car. Yeah, exactly. There's definitely that massive gap. And like, even like when a lot of me and a lot of the other racing drivers talk about when we do these sim racing competitions, like one of the big struggles we have is when we're sim racing is when you hit on the brakes and you don't feel that force on the brakes, you don't feel it. It's very odd. And uh, I've been had to recalibrate my whole braking series i mean not my braking series my whole like just braking calibration just so i know when it's pushing right before i would usually just slam it on because usually in the single series you just slam it on the brakes and i do it too much and then it just fully lock up and i was like oh i better <laughs> change that sort that out but yeah and that's the thing as well it, it's all like vice versa for the sim racers because once they get into the real life car they're gonna have to deal with g-force and like all the air and everything happening and yeah it's definitely an interesting challenge for both sides cool guys for those who are still listening to us and there's flint's um twitch account down there so what does it even mean <laughs> i was thinking it was just gonna be flint <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah i tried doing flynn for that one but it just didn't work so i don't know i've always had zero for a username of having my whole life and then saying it just came from one of my favorite shows dragon balls i was like oh i'll just add that in <laughs> why not just put that in there it's, but the thing is, you notice a lot of Twitch channels, especially the popular ones, have these 
definitely there's different names to their actual names and it's uh-huh. very funny it sort of rep- represents their brand themselves and i'm thinking like oh it's an all right name to have as a user i mean if i grow with that name be, i could probably put that on my car something it'd be pretty funny to put on my race car if my twitch gets bigger so yeah who knows it's def- i like the username personally so yeah it's cool Flynn, I have another question about Twitch. So right now the E-Series is happening and I know a few of the V8 drivers do have Twitch. Can I listen to them all or can I only follow one? So what what would happen now if I went to Twitch? So, yeah, definitely. It's definitely interesting how, for example, like the V8 Supercars have organised it because I'm pretty sure the V8s are live streaming it on Twitch at the moment because before they were doing it on Facebook. But the thing is, before that, a lot of the racing drivers, they were live streaming themselves. And yeah. it's actually a good idea that they do because it shows them as a brand. But And a lot of people say, well, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's just from their perspective. And, yeah, it is. But you get to go in more detail with the driver. And the cool thing with Twitch is got the chat the live chat room so they can can ask them something and they'll most likely respond to it you can interact with them and a lot of the good thing is also if they do well and a sponsor's watching them then people might donate to them or actually send them an email after the stream saying we want to sponsor you so it's definitely a good idea that these drivers jumped onto that and did that because then it grows their brand more and it shows what they're doing instead of just being hidden behind the camera cool see i do feel like it's very exciting yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have a simulator in Melbourne at our workshop, and I feel like the need to get on there and just do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, prior to now, I just kind of just got on there and had a go and because that's what you did. But now I feel like everyone else is doing it and that I should do it. And there's another thing, like during my research this week, Flynn, I couldn't find very many females competing in any of the E-series. Mm, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely odd. It's definitely I've funny enough, one of my um friends, she's been she's a racer from New Zealand and due to the whole situation's happening, she we actually she actually got um a simulator online and stuff and that got sent to her and she's been using it a lot and we because I was competing I think two weeks ago now, me and my mates did the Newberg twenty four hours on um I racing, which is basically the whole 24 hour race on done on simulator. And that was a lot of fun. I had to admit, and we're just currently sorting out now, like our teams and stuff and what we should have for Le Mans and stuff. But that's definitely the cool thing about sim racing is that they actually have host these events, not just like pros, but just anyone can join it. So anyone yeah. can just hop on compete. And that's the cool thing with I racing is that it hosts these events like every three to four months. And then it's basically, the real thing hopped onto the actual simulator so yeah it's definitely a cool thing yeah i'm getting excited feeling it cody are you getting excited <laughs> yeah definitely i'm getting excited to go back to actually the real thing it's um yeah, yeah it's mm. funny um uh, it'll be funny to actually see um with everyone invested into twitch and everything else especially with the simulator racing what happens when racing goes live again you might remember the e-series that the v8 supercars were putting on with just the sim races and goes back to what kind of when was talking before about how people were interviewed and stuff like that mate it tanked it was boring as batshit to be honest with you you know everyone was like there was no there was no rivalries everyone was quiet everyone was keeping to himself they were really really good races like don't get me wrong i don't know the person people personally but um there was just no there wasn't that um yeah that rivalry that stir that that hatred that love that fighting the drama that the real sport kind of entails because at the end of the day, the real sport, there's so much sacrifice and loss that people will pretty much step over their own grandma to get to the next stage. Um, with the sim racing, it's a case of, oh, I buggered that up. Okay, we'll reset and I've got another race in an hour, so I'll do that race then. Um, so I think, like, I just flicked over and just seen online that Red Bull have got, like, 10,000 people that are viewing just their live stream of the V8 Supercar E-Series round. That's not V8 Supercars. That's just Red Bull's page. But okay. if they did the same thing with the same drivers, would they get anywhere near those viewers? Mm-hmm. Because right. you think about it, yeah, V8 Supercars, the demographic is, you know, that 30 plus, so that 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old that wants to watch the sport. Um, they're only kind of watching it for the meantime because that's the only type of sport that's on. They can't get their NRL, right. AFL or anything. <laughs> So um, 
it'll be real interesting yeah, of how much investment people put into it, um, if it's a long-term, if it's going to stay, if there's going to be a new you know, life for it, or is it just going to absolutely tank and, um, yeah, go back to the normal thing again? Which will be when, do you think? Well, um, we've been talking and sussing out and trying to get as much information as possible. Um, sometimes, yeah, the kind of links have gone a little bit dry, but just watching on news and everything like that, we're thinking that our next round that might be going ahead is Darwin for the July V8 supercar round with our Aussie racing car team. It's, it's a 50-50 at this stage because... With Aussie racing cars based in Queensland, the Queensland's got one of the tighter border restrictions. I might be able to get to Northern Territory and back without um, without any quarantining, but there's no flights to fly me over there and back, and there's no logistic companies that would probably take it without you know being a high price at the moment because they the company organisers haven't sorted that out. So there's every opportunity, you know, as much as we don't like to admit it that might be the one that just doesn't go ahead for support categories, which is a shame. That is a big event that needs um, people at the track. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's the one in the calendar. It's the perfect time of year. Everyone yeah. goes, it's the biggest party you'll ever have. And, um, yeah. yeah, it's just – it is a fantastic event. But there's that risk as well it comes into, is it worth holding an event half mast or is it – you know, worth just cancelling it and not taking the risk at and resetting and going again next year. So, but um, other than that, I think our last three rounds of Newcastle, Service Paradise and Sandown will be a go-ahead. Um, yep. Because Service Paradise and Newcastle being street circuits, they have to set up and close down so we can kind of lock in those dates. But mm. Sandown might get changed. We might get added an event. We might lose an event. And at this stage, we're kind of just taking what we can at this stage with both hands and just trying to work out plans of A, B, C, D, E. If this goes ahead, how do we do this? If, B, if this goes ahead, what do we do here? Do we cancel this? So we're just kind of prepared in the back of head for everything and see what happens. Trust, yeah. And I think um, with um, TCR, they're looking to go back in August mm. um, for their, their last three rounds. And yep. then they talk about during another three rounds at the beginning of 2021, but mm. be more so that they would be like postponed or, or cancelled. Yeah. Like at, this, at this stage, just let's get started. Yeah, that's it. I think we'll all have a pretty solid answer in the next two weeks watching the patterns of what's going on. After the Easter holidays, everyone kind of got a lot more relaxed and when everyone started downloading the app and everyone's kind of feeling that it's not going to affect them now, so they're not scared to go out. But that's one thing as well. We've got to be prepared for when they kind of do give the green light, we can see an absolute boom happening because I know yeah. I've been kept inside for two months. Uh, you know, if there was a kid down the road that was racing pebbles and they could have a grandstand next to it, I'd be there watching it and probably put my best <laughs> on it, you know, like it, just, to, just to get out of the house. So mm. it's, um, yeah, there's going to be a boom, there's going to be a crash, there's going to be this, there's going to be that. It's just getting your plan sorted, a preparation of what you can and your funding and all that type of stuff involved. So, Yeah, well, next Monday night on the main Facebook page at Motivate T at 5 o'clock, um, I am speaking to the band and manager there and we're talking about what life does look like now and what precautions they've had to put in place um, to reopen and um, when their first race meetings are going ahead and, and, yeah, what does life look like for them going forward? So, again, next Monday at 5 o'clock, join us if you want to know. Lovely. Yes. I'll be there. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Thank you again for joining us. Sorry, Flint, do you have anything else? Um, no, that's no. it from me. But yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. No, thanks for all your insight, as I said. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do everything, can we, Cody? That's why you know it's great to share the love, and That's you know it. we can all learn, exactly. we can all learn of one another. And I've definitely mm -hmm. learned some things. But thanks, guys. Um, again, um, this is Flynn's details. If you want to go follow him on Twitch and TikTok, and Twitch. Cody is on Facebook and Instagram, and follow him what he's up to as far as getting his name out there. He's doing a fantastic job. He seems to be everywhere, as I said previously. Um, follow him I, also on LinkedIn um, under Cody Mackay as well. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. Have a fantastic night. I'll let you guys go watch the replays now. And <laughs> we'll watch the replay of tonight. Thanks, thanks Rena.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at Motivate to Team. Until next time, take care.